There's nothing more important than using a vulgar to getting your willy wet. I'm telling you not to be as choosy than when you get your first deal. You just got to get your first deal because it changes the complexion. Number one, your board now has coesed together. They know they've done a deal because right now you're in the beginning, you're selling off the track record of 200 years experience of all these guys and gals. But that doesn't mean they've done a deal with you. Now you've done a deal. So now you're part of that 200 year history. But when you have that first board meeting and you're all sitting around in this 200 years or 250 years of experience and you've got one day of experience, it will become intuitively obvious to everybody at that meeting that you're wasted space. And why do you have 60 or 70% of this business when you don't know shit? And at a meeting in Manhattan, they will come out and they will say, hey, what is it from Brooklyn? What's he got 64% of this deal? Doesn't know shit. And that's exactly how they're going to say it. And this is the time your chairman steps into the breach like Robocop. We're here because of this worthless piece of shit. It was his energy from this worthless piece of shit. It was his idea from this worthless, to have your back. You, you, I hear from you kids all the time, I got your back. You don't know what got your back even means. But that chairman better have your back. Otherwise, you'll be out on your ass. It's the single most important person you bring on the board. The chairperson. I have a couple of chair it's. But for the most person, it's about 90% of the time it's a guy, 10% of the time it's a gal, and a half a percent it's a it. But we don't care if it's a it, a gal, or a guy, as long as they step into the breach like Robocop and remind everybody at that meeting that you're all here because of this kid. And I've had deals collapse right there because the, ch the chairman doesn't do that. The chairman says, he steps forward like Robocop, but he says, you're right. Let's pay the guy a finder's fee, let's get rid of him. I see it happen, not monthly, but four or five times a year. And then what do you say? Well, we'll tell you how to, what to say now, later. Now, we're talking on. about Egypt, Iran, Brazil, Bolivia, Belarus. There is no rule of law, so it doesn't matter. But I only want you to buy businesses that, where there's a rule of law. UK's got a great rule of law. The United States and Canada have great rules of law, meaning you can sue the asshole and fight if they try to. But a good portion of the planet, even though they have laws, they're not a really rule of law. See, the, the law in America is whether you're rich or poor. Obviously, you get better representation when you're rich, but you can go to court. And a lot of these countries, it uh, doesn't matter. If you're not rich and you're not connected and you're not paying bribes to the government, there is no rule of law. We thought about that. You know, uh, the, uh, everything's for sale. They're giving shit away. And he obviously looks the part, right? Not being racist, but he looks the part. You know, his language, right? I mean, we mentioned that. I mean... They're giving businesses away in Hong Kong. You send the emails, and I made the call, and is the principal in. Now, the principals, meaning the owner, you want somebody that can make a decision. And normally, the best time is late afternoon, early evening, to make a call, and in most of the system living, anybody can pick up the phone. They don't have a receptionist. And you ask, is the principal or owner happen to be in? And they say, yes, and you've got a script for this, too. Uh, Hi, my name's Rufus Doofus. I'm just a little uh, peasant Irish boy from, have you, and now there's different ways. When you ask him, have you ever considered selling? Almost everybody has considered selling at one time or another. That's more of an open-ended. And you'll find out which one you sound best giving. And that'll take you 15, 20 calls and you'll know which one you sound and what you're trying to be is sound sincere. For those of you that, I know that's a big stretch. For those of you uh, like coming from the, the car industry, it's hard to sound sincere, but uh, sound sincere. And on the, other, on the other side of the equation, you're doing this a favor. You're going to allow them an exit. Well, in the beginning, I just call because you need the practice. But a company's house is a pretty good source of information, just as I said, the Chamber of Commerce and a few other places. I, I would check. And now company's house information is free. Didn't used to be free, but now it's free. It's online. It, uh, I'm, I've Takes never, two seconds. I've Name, never, limited. I, I've never done it, but I know my crack staff have done it. I would check before. Not a final, a final example. The, you want normally in businesses that have at least four employees. This is all in the material you get, but I'm going to say it because I'm thinking about it. Four employees, and you want, you want a big enough universe. The universe that Peter went after in hospitals normally wouldn't be considered big enough because there's so few. But he wanted to stay in Hungary, so he did it, and he was successful. Normally, you want a universe at least 10 times greater than 40. You only got 40 or 50 hospitals, 
it doesn't take much up before everybody knows and you've got nobody to buy. And, the, and that's not making excuses for Peter why he wasn't more tough, but he was just tough enough to get the deals done and, uh, in a small universe. But for example, in the Netherlands, there's uh, 1,700 uh, chiropractors that have four or more employees in the Netherlands. 1,700, 1,700. That's a good enough universe. Not the chiropractors zero to four, but chiropractors have four or more employees. Normally, it's just like the uh, bedpan. Normally, the rule of thumb, not the rule of thumb, the easiest entry is 40 beds. 40 beds, 40 beds we are interested in because we'll roll up a bunch of 40 beds. In America, the rule, the rule of thumb is bigger, 80 beds, more or less, 70, 80 beds. Not interested in, and so we can chase them. Today, we listen to some more webinars from Kai's in the trenches doing deals now, and they say, I did my fifth deal like this my, in Corona. This is, this is Corona era day. My sixth deal, my seventh deal, my eighth deal in, in Corona. And, uh, and you'll, you'll be able to hear that basically the, the only difference is you can do the deals faster. Contrary to common belief, the only difference is they get the deals done faster, not slower. And they get the deals done faster for one simple reason, or not one, a couple simple reasons, one of which is that they're not having to put traffic to go see. They can do it on their laptop, and you can get a lot more presentations completed on a laptop. And I told you the last couple of days, you should be able to do three, four, five a day easily really before breakfast, but I'm giving you the benefit of the doubt that you're uh, uh, nimrods all day, which means as long as Corona lasts, we can build up wealth, transactional wealth faster. And again, not that I want Corona to last because people die. I said it every day almost, Corona would be terrific, especially if nobody had to die. <laughs> but that's not the way it is. Because there's always a pay price to action. And the pay price to action for Corona is you're dead. But when he dies, it's a statistic. When I die, it's 100% personal. So as long as it's them dying and not us, that should be all that we're interested in. Other than for a few of you are save the world, tree huggers. And as you heard Marcus Bauer say yesterday, he says, I chopped down the tree. I'm, a tree, I'm not a tree hugger because I chopped down the trees. And he says he leaves no meat on the bone. That means he wants to rip their lungs out. And we don't have any lung ripper outers. I don't know how to say that right in this group. And when I told you the analogy, you put a bullet to the, not a bullet, put a gun to the head of your favorite child, I didn't see anybody, if I can get it done, I can get it done. Maybe you don't have any favorite kids. But this is life and death. The, the kids that have been successful during Corona have looked at this life and death, not life and death vis-a-vis -vis Corona, but life and death, they got to get it done now because as soon as Corona's over, it's going to be harder again. It's never as hard as the other guy, but it's harder again. Right now, it's easy for us. And you heard the uh, gangster lawyer, the first uh, webinar, the second webinar you heard uh, a few days ago say it's because they're scared to death. And right now, they're more scared than you are. When corona ends, that's not going to be the case. You'll be more afraid than they are. So we got to hunt while they're, you know. I tell the, the story, not story, we had a Mexican kid from Mexico, went to Poland, uh, couldn't speak Polish, rolled up and exited. He bought um, uh, tattoo parlors, and there's something else that goes along with that, triage. And he bought and he bought and exited with 11 or 12, and all in less than a year. Couldn't speak Polish. Couldn't speak Polish. And then he took his seven or eight million euros, went back to uh, Mexico, and used that as a seed, seed capital to do whatever he was going to do. Got a pretty Polish wife. 